most people are very confused about the subject of wine in the Quran. At the beginning, the Quran approved of drinking wine, but slowly this changed to complete prohibition. Why and at whose behest did Allah reveal the verse prohibiting the drinking of the wine? This is a question asked by many people. When one studies the hadiths of Bukhari and Muslim, one will come across stories associating Muhammad with the pleasures of drinking wine for almost 15 years before the alleged prohibition verse was revealed. It is important to note that it was Umar ibn al-Khattab who pestered Muhammad about such a prohibition because Arabs were going to the mosque fighting drunk. As usual, revelations on demand were descended. The following story from the Ahadith points to such a conclusion. Bukhari, Volume 7, Book 69, Number 486, narrated by Anas. Before alcoholic drinks were prohibited, we could rarely find wine made from grapes in Medina, for most of our liquors were made from unripe and ripe dates. In the Quran, wine is called khamr and is mentioned explicitly in the following five verses only. Al-Baqarah 2.219 They ask thee concerning wine, khamri, and gambling. Say, in them is great sin, ithmu, and some profit, manfa, for men. But the sin, ithmuhuma, is greater than the prophet, naf'ihima. In no way is this verse a clear and uncompromising edict on the two personal practices of drinking alcohol and gambling. It must be pointed out that the adjective used above to describe the usefulness or harm of drinking intoxicants and of gambling are in the form of admonitions, advice, and not as direct and unambiguous commands to desist from either of them. Moreover, it does not make sense to use the adjective sin, a moral concept, in contradistinction to profit, an economic concept. In fact, the Arabic word manfa' should have been translated to benefit and not profit, and the opposite should have been harm instead of sin. If Allah had wanted them prohibited, then the verse would have been a command, order, and not advice or admonition, and the word for this would have been haram, prohibited, such is used in verses 2.194 and 217, 4.23, 6.151, 16.118. .1 Nowhere in the Quran is the word haram associated with the drinking of wine, nor is there any punishment for being intoxicated. The punishment of 80 lashes was mandated by the later followers of Muhammad which represents a man-made ruling and not one from Allah. Khamr is also mentioned in 5.90 and 91, 12.36 and 41, the story of Joseph, and lastly in 47.15, rivers of wine in paradise for the believers. In 76.5, wine is implied, not mentioned, mixed with camphor. In 83.25, mistranslated to wine, when in fact the Arabic word rahiq, means nectar, is usually used. Al-Nisa 4.43 O ye who believe, approach not prayers with a mind befogged, sukara, until you can understand all what you say. The word sukara means intoxicated. The verse does not prohibit drinking of wine. It is pointing out to the believers that they should not attend prayers while under the influence. So Muhammad advised in this verse, against the drunkenness only during prayers. This means that the Muslims were permitted to drink some alcohol in between the times of prayer, though the number of prayers per day would limit drunkenness. However, this further means that after the nighttime prayer, the final one, Muslims could even get drunk. It was on the traditions of Muhammad, his sunnah, because the believers were not following this instruction, that Muhammad had no choice but to prohibit it totally, although there was no revealed verse doing so. Once again, Muhammad's Sunnah superseded the Quran. Al-Ma'idah 5.90 O ye who believe, wine, khamru, and gambling are an abomination of Satan's handiwork. Eschew such abomination that you may prosper. Satan's plan is but to excite enmity and hatred between you with intoxicants, khamri, and gambling and hinder you from the remembrance of Allah and from your prayers. 
will you not then abstain? Yet again, abomination means detestation, repugnance, and the verb used is eschew, to avoid, which is a warning but not an outright prohibition. From the story of Joseph in Surah Yusuf 12.36, Now with him there came into the prison two young men, said one of them, I see myself in a dream pressing wine, khamra. Joseph said, O oh, my two companions of the prison, as to one of you he will pour out the wine, khamra, for his lord to drink. Al-Nahl 16.67 And from the fruit of the date palm and the vine you get out wholesome drink, sakara, and food. Behold, in this also is a sign for those who are wise. So called believers and unbelievers, please listen carefully to what the translator of the Quran, Abdullah Yusuf Ali says regarding this verse. There are wholesome drinks and foods that can be got out of the date palm and the vine. Example, non-alcoholic drinks from the date and the grape. Vinegar, date sugar, grape sugar, and dates and grapes themselves for eating. If sakar is taken in the sense of fermented wine, it would refer to the time before intoxicants were prohibited. For this is a Meccan surah, and the prohibition came in Medina. In such a case, it would imply a subtle disapproval of the use of intoxicants and mark the first of a series of steps that in time culminated in total prohibition. Yet, once more, the interpreter of the Quran distorts and convolutes the Arabic language and chemistry to fit his agenda and that of the Quran. The word sakara means intoxicant in every Arabic lexicon. The ahadith have stories associating date palm and vine with the production of intoxicants and wine. Even Muhammad, for almost 15 years before the prohibition was revealed, used to love and enjoy drinking wine as mentioned in the ahadith of Muslim and Bukhari. If drinking is caused by Satan, then Muhammad was under his influence all these years. In this verse, Allah is commending its use as a benefit to humans and not as harmful. One should ask the relevant questions as to why Allah, the Almighty, the All-Knowing, needed to disapprove of drinking wine in stages after having approved it in the first place. Why did not Allah prohibit it forthwith from the very beginning? How is it possible to imply that Allah did not realize that the followers of Muhammad could not remain sober after drinking wine? These questions need very sobering answers. Muhammad 47.15 Here is a parable of the garden which the righteous are promised. In it are rivers of water incorruptible, rivers of milk of which the taste never changes, rivers of wine, khamr, a joy to those who drink, and rivers of honey, pure and clear. And Mutaffifin 83.25 their thirst will be slaked with pure wine, rahiqin, sealed, maktum. In fact, the translation of this verse is wrong, since the Quran is mentioning yasquna min rahiqin maktum, which literally means slake their thirst with nectar from sealed jugs, wherein the Arabic word khamr, denoting wine, is not used. Hence, in the whole of the Quran, there are only five instances wherein the word is used explicitly, and only in 2.219 is it frowned upon, but not prohibited. al muwatta Hadith 42.2, the Had for drinking wine. Yahya related to me that Umar ibn al-Khattab asked advice about a man drinking wine. Ali ibn Abi Talib said to him, We think that you flog him for it with 80 lashes, because when he drinks he becomes intoxicated, and when he becomes intoxicated, he talks confusedly, and when he talks confusedly, he lies. Eighty lashes is the same amount as for slandering. Omar gave eighty lashes for drinking wine. Al-Nur 24.4 And those who launch a charge against chaste women and produce not four witnesses to support their allegation, flogs them with eighty stripes.